This all started when I began inadvertently hitting my nose with the string each time I shot my recurve. Nothing I consciously tried to do would get rid of it, and the pain was starting to develop a flinch. After posting this video clip on the Trad Gang forum for advice, Arnie Moe posted some advice and offered to have me swing by for some one-on-one -on -one work. Arnie has a level 4 coaching certification in NTS, which is the national training system used by American archers. He also likes to shoot traditional wood bows with a higher hunting style anchor, so I knew he'd be a great resource. With his permission, I filmed our entire training session. The actual detail that we went into went well beyond just solving my string slap issues, and I really think this info is very helpful for anyone learning traditional archery. So I tried to keep as much of Arnie's knowledge packed into this video as possible in the hopes that by watching him work with me, others can glean some useful knowledge for themselves. Here's, here's what I want you to do is when you hook up to the string, mm -hmm. all right, I want you to relax everything up here to a point where as you draw the bow, you can feel the bones in your wrist. Stretch out. Stretch out, feel that? Mm -hmm. See if you can feel that as you draw the bow this time. Just relax everything up here. The string is gonna straighten your arm for you and it should pull this way. The power of the draw comes from this upper bone here Mm -hmm. And everything from the elbow all the way to the hook should be just a loose chain bones. All right, so think that uh, and see if you can do that. Should my hook be completely vertical like this, or as vertical as you can get it? Okay. Or perpendicular to the string as as you can get it. Now, if, go ahead and lift the bow without drawing. Now, just consciously relax, relax, more, just, just loose, loosen it up, loosen it up. Your hook is strong, all right? Now, when you draw, draw with the shoulder and the upper arm. Just keep this as relaxed as you can. How's that look? Better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I can just I'll put my finger out of there. Yeah. All right. Just totally relaxed. Lever the bones. Set anchor and release. Did that hit you? No. Felt like I had a little bit of a, like a, a flinch or something. It didn't feel completely clean, but. Yeah, that's all right. <clears throat> when you're working on one thing, other things will yeah. go pot, okay? That, that's normal. <clears throat> Your whole focus is on relaxing from the elbow all the way to the hook. Keep the hook. Feel the bones in your wrist start to separate. Anchor and release. There you go. And that one did hit a little bit. I don't know if it looked any different from the... Yeah, yeah it, right your hand popped a little bit. In other words, when you released, you, you, you came out this way, and that, that's okay. what's swinging the, the string in. Relax, relax, relax. How was that? It's, it's not painful, but it's still just still there. there. Yeah. Okay, let me go uh, out to the truck and get a couple things, and we'll, we'll regroup. Okay. All right. All right, now what I want you to do is lift the bow. All right, so I the but now just let your hand, your whole arm up here, just hang as loose and relaxed as you can. It's just going to kind of glide in the air up here. Okay. All right, now draw the bow with this upper arm. Just keep that relaxed. Don't grab anything. Just let it float and draw. There you go. Let it down. Do it again. Nice and relaxed. Okay, put her down. Again. See how that's making you work here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this time, go ahead and let it down. Now hook the string with your fingers. Alright. But keep that hand relaxed. Draw the same way. Into anchor. Right 
right there. Okay, now release it. Okay, let her down. I wasn't sure it was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Relax, 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 relax. Okay, draw, anchor, keep your head up. There you go, right there. Release. Good. You feel that? That's how it should feel when you're shooting your bow. But with a 50 pound bow, that's, that's a hard thing to, mm -hmm. to really focus in on. Right. Now, let's do it again. Now, you can, you can shoot toward the target, but the arrow's not going to go anywhere. But go ahead and keep that arm relaxed. Go ahead and draw. Anchor. And shoot. The whole point of this exercise is to get you to understand what it feels like to be opening the bow with your upper arm and your back, mm -hmm. keeping this loose, floppy, relaxed. Relax, relax, relax. Open the bow from here. Into anchor. Feel the difference yeah. between what you were doing and, and this? Do you think um, some of it might be related to how I'm bringing my arm back to full draw? Partly, yes. Because I know a lot of times I try and just go kind of straight back, but I was listening to one of your podcasts and I you know, heard like kind of bringing it down like around or yeah. kind of coming down into the anchor. Exactly, yeah. What you're doing, um, here. With, with my system, the rotational draw, mm -hmm. when you lift that bow, your arrow is actually going to be pointing off to the right. Yep. All right? And then you're going to see that arrow starting here and then coming into alignment as you come in. Your draw is not straight back, it's out to in. It's this way, okay? Yep. That's what puts you into your back. And that also is what allows you to keep that whole forearm relaxed I, because I don't use any biceps at all. Okay, you're looking right through the string and the riser to the target. Arrows off to the side. Should now, I open up a little bit more? Or? Yeah, just a little bit. There you go, there you go. Now, as you draw, this hand comes straight into your anchor. There. And shoot. Okay. One more time and then we'll get that contraption off of there. Straight in, anchor, and shoot. There you go. You see, you've done that a few times now, and when you release, it's not pulling your arm forward anymore because you you're getting bone alignment, which is much stronger than muscle power. Right. Okay, let's let's take this off. Okay, now now shoot one for that arrow again. Try to keep that same feel. Up, a little, little higher. What I love, right there. Now open the bow and shoot. Almost dropped the bow. <laughs> <laughs> Got over my fingertips. I didn't hit anything that time. No. Yeah. 
when you get ready, the last thing you do before you start to draw the bow is make sure you're a fence post. From the feet all the way to the top of the head. Right there. Now lift and draw. Come to your face. Make the shot. There you go. Your follow through was excellent that time. Did you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That felt good. Yeah. What, what that's doing, see, is it's making you set up your bones to support the bow open. And when your bones are set up, then when I start to, to, to stop holding the string, my hands are just going to pop right here. It's going to come straight off the back of the arrow. Yep. Relax everything now. Relax your belly, relax your butt, head up, fence post, lift, draw straight in, anchor, shoot. Perfect. Did you get that time? Just a little bit. I see your nose is getting a little bit red. <laughs> yeah. I see some guys on the the tournament lines, they got the, the tape on their nose. Yeah, because it is a near thing. It, it, it is very close every time. But I think that if you are working on this idea here and getting a good anchor, mm -hmm. and, and part of it too is you may be a little bit far back. Okay. I know a lot of times I try and get the my knuckle by my jaw and that might be pulling me too far back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't do that. All right. What you Again, if, if you're making the draw, you're lining up the bones, and that's why we want to come a little bit low, and then we just lift the anchor. Okay. Don't arbitrarily decide to put your thumb here or here. Take what you get once you get those bones lined up. Okay. When the bones line up, it'll actually feel like you're hitting a let off on a compound bow. So maybe somewhere like right there. Uh -huh. Rather than right. All right. So here, strike that pose again. Just hold the bow up. Come back. Anchor. All right. Open your shoulders a little bit right there. Feel that? Mm -hmm. Feel the power going through. But your hand is not moved. Here's here's the deal that a lot of a lot of us do when we or in your situation, and I did it too. All right, so, but when I come to full draw, I can open my shoulders, my hand does not move on my face. But too many of us want to move the hand. All right, so it's get the bones lined up, then set the hand, then make the shot. And that'll keep that string a little bit farther forward on your face. Okay. So try that again. With a light bow, you may not actually experience the feel of let off, but it's there if you get your bones lined up. So, line up the bones, set your anchor, and shoot. And I got you a little bit that time, didn't I? Maybe I'm not focused. I know when you, when you touch my head and move it in the right spot, it feels like it's probably further, mm -hmm. more perpendicular to the, or straighter to the target than when I just do it myself. So that might be part of it too. Yeah. Part of my relax. Like if I turn my head completely at the target, it's at a bit of a strain. But if it's off to look like if I relax it, it naturally wants to come back this direction. Right. Well, here's another thing too that people don't think about or realize. And that is if I stand here and I'm looking at you and making my draw, my head doesn't move. But as soon as I do this, my nose tends to yeah. tends to turn. Mm -hmm. Let me take a couple shots and see if I can demonstrate sure. what, what it should look like to you. And I do shoot split finger too, but it doesn't matter. All right, your your release technique is the same split finger as it is three under. Three under is nothing more than an accommodation for aiming. And you see on the internet, a lot of people are, well, I get a better release with this style or that style. And no, all it is is an accommodation for aiming. The release should stay the same. Okay. All right. So I'm going to open the bow, 
set anchor. I've got the bones lined up. I can stand here and hold it all day long because I'm holding it on bones. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of what you're looking for. And there's your shot. Okay? You never think about opening your fingers for the shot. You just stop holding the string. And, and again, when I get set up here, notice my wrist on my string hand here. Yep. Never like this out. That allows me to keep that, it helps me relax that whole forearm and I can make that rotational draw. So it's not even like a, a, a straight necessarily from the start. If you start out like this, it'll, if you relax, it'll get right. pulled into alignment, but not necessarily the other way around. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. When I hold my hand like this, I can only do that by tensing these muscles here. Mm -hmm. That tension by extension will, will tense up my whole upper arm. It tenses up my biceps, which I don't want. But as soon as I go here, and I'm exaggerating now, but as soon as I get that wrist out, yep. then the weight of the bow will tend to straighten it. Here, here to the bones, anchor, here. See, my fingers are still curled. Yep. They shouldn't open and go straight. All right, so that's what, that's what you're looking to do. Try a couple more times with the light bow. Okay, so your last thing here is to stand up straight. All right, now you don't move again, you're a fence post, okay? Everything comes to your head, you never go to get it. There you go. In, anchor, relax the fingers. There, very nice. See where your hand ended up that time? Yeah. Right here behind the ear. That's where you want it. How was your nose that time? Um, it may have been a light brush. Wasn't bad. Okay. Get it out. Get it out. There. Roll that thumb down. There you go. Right there. Feel the let off. Anchor. That one didn't hit me at all. And I also, I didn't pull, I, didn't, I expanded, but I didn't uh, pull it as far back in my face as I normally would. I just kind of let it get to where it was going to get. Right, right. And it kept everything kind of in front of my face more, and it was a lot easier to align the string, it felt like, too. Yeah, yep. What, what you should see when you get to full draw is you should see what we call the string blur. Mm -hmm. That string should be in your vision of your dominant eye. All right, but if it's out here, if it starts coming back here, mm -hmm. that's where you're, you're ending up with that string starting to go to the left or to the right for you, and then you're getting that brush. Yep. How's that feel? It feels smooth. I don't know what it looks like. It looks much better. It looks much better. Um, another thing that has happened now, too, is when you were shooting before, you were getting kind of a, mm -hmm. a recoil action in your body. And now, and again, you're using a lighter bow, I understand, but, but now when you make the shot, everything is staying still. So that's one of your goals too, is to try to get the, the right. shock effect out of your body. I wonder, if, I wonder how much of that shock effect too is from, you know, you hit, you hit something on your face enough times, all of a sudden now it's a, a flinch. Right, yep, yep. You wanna try your bow again? Sure. Now, it's going to be more challenging to open the bow because uh, this will be very different from what you're used to doing, but try to keep that feel going the same way. Relax everything. Exaggerate the wrist. Open the bow. Anchor and relax the fingers. And don't, don't try to shoot your arrow now, just move it off to the side just a little bit. That way you don't start digging arrows up. Relax everything. Now only activate the muscles you need to lift the bow. 
open the bow, set anchor, and there you go. That looks good. But the important part now is, does, how does that feel? I mean, it feels good. I'm still brushing it more so with this bow than the other one. Okay. All right. Still look okay? Uh-huh. Did you get a brush again that time? A little bit. A little bit. All right. I'm being difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I can maybe try focusing on making sure that my head is is more square to the target. Mm -hmm. Now, before you before you start, set. Okay, go ahead. Open. Come to your head. Make the shot. That one was good. Okay, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. What you're going to probably want to do when you get home for a while mm -hmm. is just do blank bail like this and just work on, on making sure that everything stays still and you're, you're coming to you and never Rather going, than going to the bow. Yep. And so exaggerate it. When you get ready to start, get everything set. Yeah, felt, felt all right. Yeah, and, and when I'm holding your head like that, is it is it straining you too much? No. No. Yeah. Archery is a game of millimeters. It really is. Set everything, freeze it, and go. Oh, fine. Yeah. So it was a combination of two things that were happening to you. You were, you know, torquing that, that thing out of yep. out of plane, and then you were moving to get it. So so your your homework assignment would be to go and really work on when you you know get everything ready to go. This is called the set position. We set everything we can before we start our shot. And that includes my posture and head. And then everything from there goes, it is the motion of the arms and the hand, mm -hmm. never of the upper body. And so if it ha starts happening again, the first two things I can look at would then be, is my forearm relaxed and is my head concrete? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go up to the truck one more time and get one more toy for you. Okay. Okay. And in the meantime, try it a couple times to see what you get. That looked good. Successful. Mm hmm Okay. My friend. All right. Here's something that you can do at home, you know, when you're not at the range or shooting in the backyard or wherever you shoot is I'm going to give you this. Take it home and stand in front of your bathroom mirror. Get your stance, get your posture, make the draw, and watch yourself in the mirror. All right, here, here, anchor. Can I do all of that without any kind of body motion? Right. And then you can actually stand in front of the mirror and Make the shot. All right. And see if you can get. And this won't ever probably hit your nose because you see that it's well. So well, right. It's down there. But the point is that you can see where you're ending up. You can see roughly where the string would be. And you can get so much out of looking in the mirror. So take this with you and work on it a little bit. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing for you is to keep that arm relaxed and to keep your body and head still.
Okay. And I, and I really think that's going to solve most of your problem here. And, and yeah, you're right. You know, you look on uh, YouTube, some of the top archers are always wearing a band-aid up there. Kind of like wearing an arm guard. It, it's good protection so that you don't startle yourself right. when you're actually Show shooting. yourself off a game. Right. Yeah. So. so then with that, that same, so if you do the rotational draw, you get here, you come up into your, your solid anchor. Is there going to be a, a perfect anchor for each individual, or is there going to be a range of anchors that one can then raise up to to try and affect what, their aiming? The way I the way I answer that question is your anchor, your facial references, the hand and the face, mm -hmm. are a result of getting the bones lined up. Your actual anchor is lining up the bones. Yeah. These are facial references. So whatever they are, over time you will learn what what you're feeling here. Too many archers say, okay, I got a, a gap in my teeth. So when I draw, I'm gonna stick that finger in the gap from my teeth. But th what they're doing is they're arbitrarily choosing the gap in the teeth rather than finding out what is what are the references I really have. Right. For me, it's this thumb comes up under the jawbone. This C, for me, will hook the back point of my jaw here. Mm -hmm. And for me, this knuckle will go right up under, under my cheekbone. may not be the same for you. If you're shooting three under, that will, you know, it still has the same thing. Because by going from split finger to here, I've reduced my gaps. You know, so my point on is closer, shorter distance. Right. Um, but the point is that this is a result of the draw and not some arbitrarily chosen places that you want to feel. Over time, you will learn where, you know, you can you do a mental double check. Is my hand where it should be? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not, then something is wrong here, not necessarily here. Right. So, so it's a matter of learning what the result is rather than choosing your anchor point. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now, you're a hunter. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there thinking in your mind, ah, I'd never do this hunting. Right? Right. <laughs> and I agree. You wouldn't. But for learning, this is the way to do it. For hunting, though, it all comes together. It all comes together. It becomes smooth, it becomes fluid. And, and you do everything the same way, but you can do it at any speed you need to. It's like uh, playing basketball and you learn to shoot by just Flipping the ball up against the wall over and over again, and right it comes to game time, and you just do it. Exactly, exactly. So, and this is this is where a lot of people too um, get, you know, they watch my videos or or Jimmy Blackman's whoever, and they say, well, yeah, but that's just too formal, that's too target style type mm -hmm. of thing, and and my my reaction to that is simply, you got to walk before you run. Mm -hmm. You know, so do it in a controlled, square, perfect environment, and then when you need to, you can do it under the bush and from your knees or sitting on your butt or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's a matter, it's a matter of learning to get to your holding position. And you can get to your holding position any number of ways. You can swing draw it, you can rotational draw it, you can linear draw it. You can do it any way you want to. You have to get to that holding position, though. Mm -hmm. If you don't get there, then you're going to have a, a maybe shot. It might be good. It might not. Right. But if you get to holding, and if you learn what your holding position is, then you can get there from any position. <laughs> I said years ago, you could even do it from hanging by your toes from a tree branch. <laughs> but the point is that you need to get this ingrained into your shot so that you can get there. Mm -hmm. And then when you're out hunting, rather than trying to learn hunting skills, learn archery skills and apply them to hunting. 
rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that makes sense. You say you shoot a compound bullet, and I teach compound. I don't shoot it very often. But we get so um, concerned about aiming. But with a, with a traditional bow, all the aiming makes no sense at all if you can't repeat your shot. All right? The compound has engineered the human out of it as much as it can. Right. Traditional has engineered the equipment out of it as much as it can. Uh, and that's the difference. So aiming, aiming is just one of 11 steps, and probably not the most important one of, your, of a shot sequence. So people get too wrapped up on aiming and not enough wrapped up on form. But you just prove to yourself that if you execute the form, the arrows are going to go mm -hmm. where you want them to go. Nice solid shot. When you get home and watch your video, watch your body on, on that shot. And I'll say that. <laughs> uh, but that was a nice shot. Your body didn't move. The only thing that actually moved was your hand came back. Exactly what's supposed to happen. That uh, that will take you a long ways, but you're going to you're going to experience a, a few days of frustration. Yeah. You know because this is different. Uh, but if you stick with it, and like I say, get that rubber band in front of the mirror to double check what you're doing, and then when you shoot, really do a mental inventory of what's going on. You know, as you do it, and then after you've made the shot, stop, freeze. Where did my hand end up? Is my bow hand still up on target? Yeah, I've noticed that on the shots that feel really clean, it almost feels like my hand just kind of wipes. Yeah, it's, like, it's just a gentle motion. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, you see it in my early videos where I'm, when I make the shot, I'm going here. But in my later videos, I've learned more and more about it, and, and it's more of a gentle motion. Your hand just kind of floats back to here. There was another video I was watching, I don't remember who it was from, but he was showing a bunch of target archers in slow motion, and he would say how oh, some of them, they would end up at a spot that they were supposed to be at. But if you watch their hand from the moment that the arrow released, maybe it started by doing this, and then it came back to here. What, what happened here was rehearsed, what happened here is really indicative of what they were doing upon right. the release. That is correct. I do a lot of uh, uh, instruction with, with the high school kids on the after school program archery. And you see that a lot because a lot of their coaches are just have basic training. So they were said, okay, when you get done shooting, your hand should end up on your shoulder. So you see kids shooting <laughs> like this, you know, boom, boom. Well, why are you doing that? Well, because the coach said I should end up here. Well. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should, but they don't, your coach doesn't know why it should end up there. Right. So it's here and here. Yeah, it's a result. It, the follow through is a result. It's something that happens. It's not something you do. Mm -hmm. so. All right. There was another question I was going to ask you in regards mm -hmm. to the, um, the document on the BEST, the best form where they showed you know, different diagrams. Mm -hmm. And one of them it showed, you know, you got the, the arrow in a straight line to the target and the forearm is in line with the arrow ideally. And then, because I've seen different thought processes on this, one is that best system where you would then have from this shoulder to this shoulder through the hand is in the straight line and it's actually pointing what would be for me a little bit left of the target. Right. The other one that seems to be really popular is like the form clock where you got shoulders pretty much parallel to the line of the arrow on that, that arm. It, uh, again, it depends on how, how far you want to go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but even, even in my videos, I talk about that, that shoulder. When I make the draw, you can see the string shoulder in front of my body. And when I get done, you can see it appear behind my body, which has taken this shoulder to this shoulder to the bow hand on a line that crosses for me. To the to the right mm -hmm. for you would be to the left, all right. But again, a lot of people can shoot well just by having their shoulders pointed at the target, 
So you have kind of a broken line. Right. But ideally, you want to get that shoulder back around. And is that sensation of let off? Is that kind of a mental check that you can take to know that you've hit that position? Yep. Yep, exactly. Still feels pretty smooth from my yeah. perspective anyway. When you look at your video, you're going to like that shot. It's going to be what you want to try to emulate. Try one more shot. Um, and you're, you're, you're thinking about all of this stuff. And for a while, you're going to have to think about all of this stuff. Right. But on this shot, what I would like you to do is when you raise your bow and you start your draw, make the draw. Don't cozy it back. Just, Just get up, there. draw, anchor, and make the shot. And don't rush it. Just, just move it. Better. Yeah, it felt good too. Mm -hmm. A little bit less tiring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you. You know, when you when you do this in kind of slow motion, yeah, it, it just it, it uh, it's 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 a fatiguing way to do it. Uh, Rod Jenkins will tell you you shoot at the speed that you draw. So if you draw slow, then you have to shoot slow. But if you draw, shoot. Mm -hmm. Again, initially you'll have to, you know, kind of slow motion it, but, but... Right, especially if I find that I'm getting there in the, in the process, moving my head or something. Right. Back to, yeah. Well, I have a, a really light PVC bow, too, at home that's probably similar to that training bow. It's probably mm -hmm. like 30, 40 pounds. I don't really shoot any arrows with it, but for practicing the, the yeah. technical stuff. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Is that what you were looking for? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is very helpful. I can take this back and, like you said, use it as kind of a, a foundation to always go back to if I ever run into the same issues. And now I have the confidence that what I'm doing now is a good platform to build on. Right. Whereas before, it's like, well, this feels nice and shooting okay, but I don't know if it's ideal from a foundational standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see you've got a clicker on your bow. Yeah, and the last few shots, I wasn't hitting it. I wasn't too worried about it. But. Yeah. You, you will probably need to readjust that if you want to continue yep. to use the clicker. But the clicker, most traditional shooters don't use a clicker correctly. All right? And, and the reason I say that is they tend to get back here. It hasn't clicked yet, so they start to move their hand back more and more and more until they feel the click. Mm -hmm. And it's not a hand movement. Once you've hit those references, the clicker is activated by what we call expansion. It's this motion here, kind of opening the chest a little bit more that makes it go off. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you watch a, a recurve shooter that has the, the lever clicker yeah. that comes off the point of the arrow, yep. if you watch, you can't see any motion at all in that shooter. But the motion is called internal motion. And it's this shoulder actually pushing the bow arm out so that the bow moves out from under the clicker. So is, is it better to use, so I guess one thing I've heard about clickers is that you can use them basically as a reference to know that you hit the same draw point. Yeah. And you hit the click and you execute your shot. The other way that I've heard the clicker being used is that you get to your, your anchor, like you're saying, and you just expand, 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 and as soon as the clicker goes off, that's like your trigger, that causes the, causes the bow the to release. Yeah. Is it better to use it as a trigger or just a reference? Uh, I would use it as a reference, but you're going to find your draw length is going to change a little bit now with what we've worked on today. Mm -hmm. So initially, what I would suggest is disconnecting the clicker okay. and just working on the shot for a while. Um, in Olympic, target style shooting, the clicker is the last thing we introduce, not the first. Okay. And it's never introduced as a s solution to a problem. It's always introduced as a refinement to the shot. 
Um, and, and again, a lot of traditional shooters, and I love Joel Turner and all that stuff, but a clicker is not the end all be all to target panic or any of those kinds of things, in my opinion. And again, my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, like I say, I think a lot of traditional shooters use a clicker for the wrong reason. All right, so work on your shot for a while, then readjust your clicker to, you know, when you get here, it shouldn't have clicked, and if you expand a little bit, it should, and you can make the shot. And at that point, you can determine whether it should be a, a release trigger or just a knowledge I've gotten to a consistent draw. Mm -hmm. That, that would be my recommendation on the clicker. Okay. That works for me. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate you helping me out. No, I'm glad to do it. I, uh, you know, I, I'm on the internet a lot, uh, uh, and uh, I, I tell people that if you want to come see me, I'd be glad to work with y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it, uh, I don't shoot myself too much anymore, but I do still enjoy helping folks that want help, so.